Hello my friends. Today we'll be talking about the Twelve. The gods of Eorzea. The deities nearly everyone on the continent believes in. The deities even you probably believe in. You do select a patron deity in your character creation after all. But who are these twelve gods? How'd they come to be? What makes each one special? We'll be going over that today. The Twelve Gods. Practically everyone in Eorzea believes in these gods as they permeate the culture of every single city-state. I uh, like to go over the history of how things came to be, so... How did the Eorzean gods come to exist? What's their story? Well, the belief that there is a pantheon of 12 deities has existed in Eorzea for at least 5,000 years. A relic from the Allegan civilization described a belief in the 6 and 6 deity, and this belief was heavily ingrained in their society. And remember, the Allegans spread everywhere, spreading also their belief. Now, 5,000 years later, different cultures, peoples, and different isolated regions, yeah, this created many, many different interpretations of the origin of the gods. There are thousands of story of how they came to exist, but... Thankfully for us, a certain scholar from Charlian, the inventor of the astrologian job and lifelong theologian, Leufon, decided he would read and study all the creation myths he could get his hands on. He would find where they overlap and create what he believes is the definitive tale of the god's creation. Is this the right story? Who knows, but it is currently the most widely accepted history of the gods. It's also just in general a really fun myth. It feels quite a lot like uh, ancient Greek or ancient Roman gods and their stories. I'll read it to you here. In the beginning there was neither light nor darkness, only the world. And it was not until Alphic emerged thence in his nakedness that time take its first step forward. With him the Keeper also carried weight, and with weight were the realms of land and the firmament defined. Yet Alphic would not be alone over long, for soon from the world did another step forth. Her name was Nimia, and she was but a mewling babe who could do naught but weep, and soon her tears created a vast lake. Alphic, seeking a companion in the empty realm of his creation, took the young goddess under his wing and cared for her as one would a daughter. As Nimia grew, however, so, too, did their love for one another, until it could no longer be contained, cumulating in a divine coupling, <laughs> which resulted in the birth of two holy daughters, Azima the Sun and Minfina the Moon, and with their advent was day and night conceived. So did countless cycles of light and darkness pass, before from the world once again did another step forth. Phaliac, bearer of wisdom and knowledge, looked upon the silent and unchanging lake left by Nemea's tears, and coaxed from it a river to carry the waters to the far corners of the realm. Azima, Drawn to Phaliac's sagacy, professed her love to the new deity, and begot him two daughters. The first being Limlane, 
who took the waters created by her grandmother and expanded it into the world's seas. The second daughter was lonely Nofika, who, wanted for companions, created her own playmates, and thus brought life into the world. It was not until life had spread throughout the land and newly created seas that a new god appeared, though whence the others did not know, for the world lay dormant. His name was Osion, and where he wandered did towering mountains rise from level plains. With the formation of these spires, the cold wind flow from on high down to the warm seas and back up again, carrying life that was once reserved for land and water into the skies. Those winds did bring love into the heart of Lim Lane, yet though she longed to be with Osion, his wanderlust prevented the two from ever being joined over long and lo, they never beget children of their own. This was a time of great creation, but also of great chaos. Osion's mountains rose and fell at his whims. Phaliac's rivers flowed hither and dever, and Limlane's seas ever expanded, swallowing entire swaths of land before the gods even knew they were gone. To bring order to this chaos, Nimir pried forth a mighty comet from the heavens and gave it life, directing it down to the world that it may destroy the excess her sons and daughters have wrought, while bringing harmony once again to the realm. And for many days and night was the world calm, the gods content in the order which now reigned supreme, that is, until the whorl waked from its slumber and beckoned forth two final deities, Byragot and his younger sister, Halone. It was feared that the untamed and ambitious siblings might once again usher chaos onto the world. So to see that they were properly disciplined, Nemea quickly made them wards of Rolger, the destroyer. A builder by nature, Byragot resented his new stepfather, who could teach him only of destruction, choosing instead to spend most of his time in the tutelage of Phaliac. The scholar bestowed upon his eager student the knowledge he would use to forge the tools and techniques of creation. Though more open to her new father's teachings, Halone too grew restless longing to test her strength. An opportunity arose when Osion invited the young goddess on one of his journeys. It was during these travels that Halone's ambitions slowly transformed into a lust for battle. While on the road, she would challenge every creature she met, honing her skills and methodically devising new techniques for killing when Nofika, mother of life, learned of Halo's wanton destruction of her creation, she was angered beyond words and swore revenge. But the Fury ignored the matron's challenges, widening the rift between the two. Osion, feeling responsible for the rift, devised a plan to calm Nofika. From within the mountains of his creation, Osion summoned forth a fount of magma, which spewed forth onto the land. Upon cooling, the magma took the form of the twelfth and final god, the dual-aspected Naldfal. With Naldfal, Osion had provided a god to oversee the souls of those who met their death and provide them peace in the afterlife. Satisfied that her creations would no longer wander the void aimlessly, Nofika agreed to a truce with Halone, and with the advent of the twelfth and final god was the Pantheon complete. But before they could call an end to their toil, they first required a realm in which they could reside and watch over their myriad creation. 
to this end they created the seven heavens, and to there did they finally retreat, bequeathing rule of Eorzea to mankind. And that is the story of their creation. Next time we'll talk a bit more about each of the gods, their relations, the heavens they reside in, as well as how people generally select a patron god. Maybe we'll even briefly touch on the different patron saints if I don't cut the video in half again or it doesn't get too long. But for now, goodbye my friends, and have a great day. Bing bing.